Hi, hello everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, this is uh, Muhammad Adil, a uh, pediatric physical therapist um, and also a seating specialist. Um, today topic, uh, the adaptive seating system. Uh, now I'll share the presentation so you can see um, an outline of uh, our conversation. Your questions are very welcome anytime. Uh, so what is, one second. Now you will see the presentation. Okay, so after seating is simply uh, a tool that makes the child's life happier and also your life as a caregiver or a parent uh, much easier. How can the seat make uh, such a change? So be before that, let's imagine some situations. Uh, what if you are spending the whole day lying on your back or your tummy? What if you can only see your feet uh, or the floor all the time or most of the time? Uh, what if you want to join the family during meal times? Um, or what if when you sit, something hurts uh, your neck or your any part of your body? Um, what if you can sit, but you can't reach for what you can see in front of you on the table or on the tray? And so many other situations uh, that, of course, we need sitting for. And our children might be in such situations that they are uh, unable to participate in something they are willing to. So the adaptive seating system or the adaptive seating tool is to solve such problems, is to make our children be able to participate in, in such situations. So it's not only we sit, but we need to offer them a quality, a good quality of sitting or a better sitting quality. So what situations they can participate in when they sit properly or when they sit in a nice adaptive seating system? For example, they can join educative media, they can join a nursery, they can join a school or a special needs school. They can be in an educative medium, even at home, if, if if you, as a mother or a father, want to, to learn, teach your child something and he unable to sit, how, how this is going to happen? So sitting enables you to teach your children about, uh, about any concept you want to. Also, lots of play context needs sitting, uh, like fine motor play or even ball playing. If they're lying, how are they going to, to uh, participate in such situations? Also the meal time, it's not only the feeding time, it's also a socialization time. Usually we sit uh, in the lunch or dinner, we're talking, we're, we're sharing and so on. So it's, it's a, a, an important social uh, situation besides uh, being a meal time, of course. Uh, if you want to take him or her out and they are lying down in a stroller or uh, in a pram, just seeing the sky or just seeing the, 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 roof, the ceiling, so they're not going to enjoy going out as much as we do. So we need them to feel what and, and uh, experience what we experience also as parents. So these are all situations and much more. These are just examples uh, that we can help our uh, children who has challenges with sitting to participate in. Um, this is just a, a, a diagrammatic ex, uh, explanation. For example, again, in the, in the, the picture on the left, he, the boy is sitting, but he cannot reach for the cup because it's not, the seat is not oriented in the way that helps him the best, okay? But in the, in the other picture, he's oriented again upright in a way that he can reach for the cup. And this is just an example, but the cup is just an example. So, Research uh, long time ago has started about seating systems and how they help our children. And there are lots of evidence, even much more than these evidence that I've mentioned, that it increases uh, happiness. It also increases their autonomy and their social interaction, the quantity, the number of activities and the quality of participation in such activities also. And um, from an occupational therapy perspective, it also in, it improves their performance in, in such tasks they, they can do from an occupational uh, perspective. And also their accuracy in such tasks in, increases and so on, and much more. 
So these are also examples about how sitting nice can help you play, can help you reach, and, and so on. So, OK, this is a good, the, 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 the important side. And there is also another side that's so serious that we need to take care of. And it's a prerequisite. It's uh, a protection side and the safety side of the seat. It's, it does not only help us or to help the children to participate in situation, but also prevents lots of harm, especially uh, these things that might happen when we don't sit properly. The deformations, the, uh, the deformities, the musculoskeletal deformities, the muscle shortening, the contractures, scoliosis, hip dislocation, and many other things that are quite common when we don't sit properly, even pressure sores. Uh, so these are all lots of, there are lots of complications that might happen if we don't sit nice or uncomfortable, just hating to sit if, if you're not sitting in a comfortable, um, relaxed uh, system. So in, in terms of the body functions and structures, uh, seating has also been found that it helps respiratory function. How? Because if, again, when you sit properly, when you sit in a good posture, your chest has a better room for expansion. Your respiratory muscles are in, in a better position to, to uh, perform. Uh, there will not be retained secretions when, that we see in, in the children that lie most of the day on their back. Uh, this is also research findings that sitting in a, in a good adaptive seating improves the expiratory volume and and when the respiratory function is improved, the, the frequency and the, the of times that they get chest infections, of course, reduces. This is something common amongst the, the children that who have uh, sitting challenges. The abnormal muscle tone, all the movements that we see, the straight legs uh, all the time, or the involuntary movements that we see in the arms and legs, uh, sliding of the pelvis down, um, sliding out of the seat, or inability to put them on a couch just because they have movements that they cannot control. Uh, putting them or offering them a good seat has been found that it reduces the, the abnormal muscle activity. And this was evident by, by devices that can measure the muscle activities. Um, it, also, it was also found in many, many researches that the, we protect them from hip dislocation and hip deformities and trunk uh, and spinal deformities uh, when they sit in, in the perfect, proper posture. So when should we ask or when should we look for somebody to help with adaptive seating or when should we offer such a seating? Not everyone, uh, every child would need it and not throughout his life, maybe in some just a stage, maybe it, it, will, it will need to be changed over time. So when should we seek help? To, to offer an adaptive seating or to adapt it or to change it. Uh, whenever you find that your child is facing challenges uh, when he sits or when she sits, or they cannot perform or participate in situations that you or they wish to participate in, that's the time when you need to ask a specialist. Ask the physiotherapist that you see, ask the occupational therapist, ask the physician. Anyone in the rehabilitation team is uh, well oriented about when we need to refer for adaptive seating system. So how do we decide about this? First, we need to determine if they are in need or not. We as specialists have uh, measurement tools, we have assessment scales, we have numerical things that we can use that can tell us this child needs an adaptive seat or we can just wait and with therapy and they will sit on their own. So first we need to see, yes, is this child, is this girl, is this boy in need for a special seat or he can sit on any conventional uh, system uh, that's available in the market in any um, uh, shop. Yeah, if we determine that, yes, they need, they need a special seat, they need a special system, then we get into more details. We take measurements, we take, uh, we take, we ask the parents, what situations are you looking uh, to uh, for your child to participate in? Is it school? Is it going out? Is it feeding time at home? 
Is it something indoor only? Is it outdoor? Is it a traveling system in the car? Is it a mobility system, a wheelchair? Is it a standing device? Is it a toilet commode? Is it a shower seat? So first, we need to know more in detail, in depth about how the child lives, how he, his or her day goes, what activities that are more crucial uh, to intervene in and, and offer an equipment to help with. So the assessment and knowing the need and what situations that we are targeting will help us with putting a goal. Okay, task one and two, we need to uh, progress in. We need better participation in. We need to prevent X, Y, Z deformity. These are the goals. How can we get to this? We have different types and different shapes and different models of seatings in different budgets, in, in different materials, and so on. So we sit together as, as a, a specialized team and with the parents, of course, or with the, the child if he is comprehensive. And we decide together about what system is the best. And of course, we to deliver the system, we follow up. Did this system help achieving the goals that we set together? Yes or no? Yes. Is it the optimum fulfillment of the goal or we need to give a better adjustment within the same system to help achieving the goal to its maximum? Or it did not serve the goal and so we troubleshoot. What's the problem? Is it the usage? Do we need to train the parents to better fit the child in the seat? Do we need to add an extra accessory, a different type of a belt, a different type of a cushion? Uh, different parts of the seat can be changed and can make dramatic changes. So let's see some examples, like what are these varieties that we can see and what are the small differences uh, that make massive changes. So seats vary a lot between indoor seats, mobility systems, and so on. So again, it depends on what is the need. What, why do we need such a seat? Just a positioning system to prevent deformities or we need it to help uh, the feeding therapist in better positioning for the oromotor function, for better swallowing? Do we need it for better hand function, for writing skills? Do we need it for better access to a communication device like an eye gaze device, like an iPad? Um, do we need it to reach better for the controllers of a powered wheelchair? and so on. So these are just examples. Some of them are indoor, just indoor, and some of them are outdoor bases. Some of them go up and down according to the activity and so on. Uh, there's more examples, activity chairs, uh, mobility bases, so many accessories. Wheelchairs also are part of a uh, wheelchair prescription is part of what the seating specialist can help with uh, because a wheelchair is, can vary between being just a mobility device to help the boy or the girl to move from a spot to another outdoor, and it can be both a positioning system and a mobility device at the same time. Uh, so we can, you can have a, a, a positioning system on top of a wheelchair base and so on. Um, for example, this picture on, on the left, this boy, he's just sitting on a bench and we've added some uh, kind of a wedge or a triangle underneath. This wedge is just an adaptation. Some children might just need this. They might not need any other kind of support. We just need to add a, a little piece of accessory, improves their sitting quality and may, uh, helps a makeover for the, the, the alignment of the body. And it varies all the way to maximum support, to different levels of support. Uh, sometimes we see a child in a seating system already and we just need to help. Okay, maybe the belt needs, the belt angle or the attachment point can need to be changed. Sometimes we just need to add an extra belt. You need something in front of the knee to block him from sliding. Maybe you can just need to add a, a cushion, just like the cushion on the right side on the presentation to give better pressure distribution so he's more comfortable. So he will tolerate longer periods of sitting in school or, and so on. So what we usually uh, hear from parents is a very common question. Okay, they already purchased an, a very complex seating system. It's quite expensive and they still can't see what the progress that they have expected. So again, here comes the role of assessment within the system or the follow-up. 
uh, let's see, maybe the measurements are not adjusted in, to, to the child's size. Maybe he's missing just one piece of accessory. Maybe the, the angle, the angle between the back and the seat, the angle of the tilting, the, where the foot support is. Uh, maybe he needs a better arm rest. Like the, the seating system in itself is not the only thing that we need to, to uh, pay attention to. We need to pay attention to how uh, good is the fit of the child within the system. And is this the right thing that feeds his needs or not? Uh, so, for example, this this picture. This boy is in a, a very nice seating system. It's good, uh, appropriate size. But if you uh, have a look at his back, it's curved. It's still, he's not sitting straight. So he's still subject to, in long-term use, for back problems. The tray where her ha his hands are put are, is too high. Uh, he cannot use it for something meaningful. So. This system will just need to add a cushion, a better cushion behind the back, a lumbar pad we call, to restore the, the, the straight back again. We need to take the tray off and put a new tray that's closer to his body, that's lower a little bit so he can use it properly. And this is very, very minor adjustments can be done in, within the same system and can make dramatic, uh, drastic changes to the quality of sitting. Um, the seating system does not always have to be very complicated. Again, it can just vary from a single single pillow on just, that can be put on any uh, standard chair or just a belt on a basic chair up to uh, an integrated positioning system with tilting and reclining and, and different stabilization accessories and so on. So this is very crucial because extra support when it's not needed will uh, restrict the child, will demotivate him to move. Maybe he will just hate sitting if he's too restricted and he doesn't need this level of support. So usually when we do the assessment, we see what is the level where of support where the child can perform his best and to be the least support possible. So least support possible is a golden rule that we we start our prescription with. We don't want to underestimate his abilities and we don't want to uh, to restrict his ability to gain new skills and new uh, abilities. Um, so this is uh, simply uh, a global idea about the, um, the uh, seating systems. And uh, I would like to, uh, to hear from you. Uh, you must have got questions or uh, queries, something you need to clarify about what I've uh, just said. Uh, we'll be happy to hear your uh, questions. Yeah, a uh, question about using the toilet for a child with, yeah, with good trunk support. Um, Okay, uh, it, it, sometimes the children they cannot fit in terms of um, in terms of uh, the, the, re the regular toilets that we have. Maybe he, they can just sit on a smaller size toilet if they don't need extra support. And there are special commodes that can be put onto a conventional toilet to make it a, an adapted toilet. Maybe with just handrails on the side, uh, cushioned uh, seat. Um, a short back support. Um, if they don't need uh, trunk support, then we just need rails maybe, uh, or a smaller seat. So again, this needs assessment now for the child in his environment. We need to see how the toilet at home is uh, and how to make it accessible and usable uh, for the child without, again, extra uh, support that's not needed. And also, if we are teaching the child to transfer from the toilet to, uh, to standing or from the toilet to another seat, it's also to take care uh, of uh, how high is the toilet. Do we need a footstool? Do we need a, a ladder or a, a hand grip beside so they can uh, learn to stand up and transfer uh, to standing or to another um, mobility system? 
Uh, another question: Do you tailor those seats? Uh, yes, when 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 the ready-made ones are are not an applicable option or not accessible due to, of course, the sometimes the high cost, we can design uh, and and tailor indoor indoor systems because outdoor system needs like. Uh, uh, it, like industry, uh, a complicated industry that we cannot make outdoor systems, but we can help tailoring uh, indoor systems made out of wood uh, and foam. But again, it depends on the complexity of the the seating support that your child needs. Uh, maybe the level of support that he needs or the accessories uh, won't fit in a tailor-made one. But again, it depends on the assessment and. Uh, tailor-made wooden seats can cover a huge um, range of sitting abilities, and they are very uh, useful. They are um, um, they don't take time for for um, manufacturing. Easy, low cost, uh, and also it's 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 possible to make a room for growth within such systems, uh, so as not to change them every now and then. Uh, yes, uh, any, I hope I've answered your questions elaborately. Uh, any more clarifications, any more questions? I'd like to hear it. So again, you, you might need, um, yeah, that's perfect. Any other question would be very welcome. Um, sometimes you might uh, hear from the feeding specialist or the speech therapist that we need to sit better, uh, better to, to perf perform better. Maybe you will um, uh, take a referral from a nursery teacher, uh, maybe from your occupational therapist. Uh, because seating specialists might be uh, uh, have a background of both either occupational or, or physical therapy, uh, so these uh, the, these specialists can help you uh, pick uh, or decide that your child needs help with uh, a seating system. Uh, I hope that I've made the topic uh, simple and uh, clear and uh, hope that the presentation was helpful. Uh, we're always there, not necessarily in a webinar to help. You can uh, reach out for us anytime uh, at Hope AMC. We can help you with the prescription, with choosing, with this deciding, uh, or with just following up if you have a system or uh, adjustments, adaptations, and so on. Uh, you can also send us uh, your queries anytime. Uh, thanks so much uh, and goodbye. Uh, see you soon.